It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Mayor's Report. Uh, you know, we have a Mayor's Report in Pottsville with uh, Mayor Dave Clues, and we have one with Mayor Jeff Gassat. And we're here today with Mayor Jeff Gassat. Thank you very much, incidentally, for the nice comments we're hearing and suggestions I'm getting on the Hazelton Mayor's Report. We are here at the fabulous building, Hazelton Public Safety Center. Now, as an investor, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, you paid $1.7 million for this. Correct. It was appraised at one point nine million. Correct. And the insurance thing is worth two point six million. Yeah, the insurance replacement value is uh, over two point six million. That's not a bad investment, considering uh, that you'd have to pay for the you got a grant for the building. Uh, this this uh, was paid for through the American Res Rescue and Recovery Plan money, um, so we did not pay any taxpayer money out of this. So, and we spent our ARPA money very wisely and on all items that we needed within the next five to ten years. What fascinates me is that, you know, the, the plan that you put in for it, because you have this, I mean, in the, as you will see in throughout the show, the place is absolutely set up perfectly. Um, but the good news, my friends, for the greater Hazelton area, in, in, in Hazel to Hazelton area, yeah, how many cops you have now? Uh, right now we have 48. Yeah. Um, we have one hired this week, or one starting this week, mm -hmm. and then we also have three in the academy. So... Uh, 52, which is the all-time high for the city. Um, so we're well on our way to our goal. Our goal was 56. Mm -hmm. You know, back in 2016, our goal was to get to 56, and we're getting there. And kudos to the Hazelton Police Department. I was talking to this chief just a little bit, and, uh, you know, crime is, uh, I mean, you have it, but nowhere near what it was before, and, and things seem to be, thank the good Lord, knock on wood, pretty stable in the city. Am I correct? I, I believe so. It's, you know, we have a, a great police presence now. We're out there. Um, people see us. They know we're serious. Our camera system is working. And I think it's, you know, making people stay away, you know. Explain the camera system again, uh, Jeff, because some people, you know, when the, what happens, people coming in, how does that system work? So the, the flock camera system, there are, I think, believe 64 of them now throughout Hazleton, the Hazleton area. And any time a vehicle passes one of these cameras, your license plate, a still shot of your license plate is taken. So it's not video, we're not enforcing anything, we're not spying on anybody, but a still shot is taken of, of any license plate coming in or exiting the city. Uh, we made a, a, an entire fence around the city, so there's not one way in or out. And then we also have some more dispersed within the city, and now the other municipalities are joining our, our, our grid. So anytime a vehicle comes in, we get a snapshot. If for any reason we are searching for a vehicle, um, if it's involved in an amber alert, a theft, uh, any type of crime, you know, um, you type into there uh, a vehicle type, a color, a license plate, a partial license plate, and it'll pop up and show everyone that in the time frame that you request where it was, which cameras it triggered. Um, other, also, other, other police departments can join on to it also and help fight crimes throughout the, the whole area. And it's working. It's working very well. It's working very well. Now, this place, let's talk about this place because there's so much more to cover in the show. We're at the Hazelton Public Safety Center. What entrance, like, if someone wants to come? So anybody coming to the police station should use the 13th Street exit. So it is the southeast corner of the building. Uh, come over 13th Street. There's a handicap ramp. It's well lit up. Um, and that's where you would go to pick up the, the phone uh, or to push the button to talk to a police officer, also to uh, pick up a report or a file an incident. So everything's in the front, front of the building. So just come over. Now, we did uh, turn 13th and 14th streets into two ways for easier access to the police department in case of an emergency. Um, but we're, we're trying to get everybody to come into that specific location um, to, to ask for an officer. We, we are utilizing the entire three floors of the building. Mm -hmm. um, our patrol area is in the first floor. The third floor is all our detectives. And then the, the middle floor, which is ground level, is where you come in for records. And it's actually where like, the locker rooms and the, the common areas would be. 
and everything is set up uh, strategically for all the different departments. It, it's, it's all strategically set up for an easy flow mm -hmm. of you know anybody coming in. You know, um, you know, we put a big sign on the building to make our presence known when you come into the city. You can see it's it. It's very hard to miss. Yeah. In in terms of of looking at the um, uh, the operation here in, in in the city hall. The transition, again, was made for what reasons? Well, our police department has grown to where we were so crammed in there, it was hard to function. People running into each other. Um, when people are coming in to talk to police officers, you're out in the hallway, you know, everybody else could hear you, what's going on. You know, sometimes you have the victims and the, and the everybody else, they're overhearing stuff. So it, we actually outgrew City Hall. And then, you know, the idea originally was we wanted to bring other support into Hazleton. You know, um, we toyed with the idea of bringing the senator and congressman and state representative in the city hall, um, but we found them a home at the old post office. So now we moved on to wanting to fill city hall with the county offices. So they should be moving in by the end of this month. Um, that way people from Hazleton or from Southern Luzerne County don't have to drive up to Wilkesbury to do any business. Um, so they will have all their offices will be in City Hall. Are they currently moving in now? They are, they're actually, today they're doing wiring, so okay. they will be moving in shortly. When do you think they'll be in full operation? I'm hoping by the end of the month, you know, the dates conflict with each other, Who, which offices are gonna be in mm -hmm. mid-month, which ones are gonna be at the end of the month. Now, so. will you have enough parking for that, Jeff? Yeah, you know, when we move the police department out, um, they utilize 28 parking spots. Mm -hmm. um, so by them moving out, there's at least 28 more parking spots available. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it seems to be working very well now, so I don't see it being much of an issue. What do you see, um, and before we get into all the things that are happening in the city, I, I, don't, I don't know how you keep up with them, um, but what do you see in the future happening here uh, in, in uh, Hazleton? Well, there's a lot going on in Hazleton. Yeah. You know, um, we have the, the recreation departments moving on, uh, many d projects with, within the, the, re the, the playgrounds themselves. We'll be announcing a lot of sporting events. We have our new athletic director. Um, they're bringing back the basketball, mm -hmm. uh, Solo Sereni League. We're going to have uh, pickleball and tennis clinics. Uh, the, the, we're redoing the hockey facility now. We've got the grant to redo the hockey facility, um, the, the soccer field on Pine Street. So we have a lot of sports going on, baseball. Like, so we're really trying to give everybody something to do in the city. Mm -hmm. um, now, getting talking about the city, um, the streets department, you know, we have any roads. Uh, we talked about this last show, but you are doing paving again, right? Yes. Um, I mean, this year, it'll be, the paving will be down a little bit this year um, because we're trying to let the utilities get their work done. You know, we've been going so fast that the utilities uh, aren't able to keep up with us. Um, there's a, a large utility project going on in the um, south, but, but between the like Buttonwood area, mm -hmm. that's gonna go all the way over to but Beach Street Playground, and then all the way up to Vine and Green Street. Mm -hmm. So all that, that pushes down towards the, uh, the hockey rink mm -hmm. down there. That is all going to be done, so those roads will be torn up. I believe the south, or the northwest section, there's a lot of work going on over there with UGI, and the. So we're kind of at a standstill with paving for the city this year. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to be... Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to patch. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're patching and yeah. overlaying. Yeah. But we are putting out for bid um, this week the mm -hmm. David Avenue project up in the, the Heights. Uh, Cunningham Drive project will be going out for bid. And the Vine Street, we just finished the new lights on Vine and Diamond. So now we'll have to pave from, on Vine Street from Church, wrap Vine... From Church Street wrapped around down Vine to Broad Street, um, that'll be getting paved. And then we're also going to be looking to pave around the police station you know, to help protect our vehicles a little bit. Speaking here of the uh, police station, you, you, we're covered 24 hours here, correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, I guess the chief has them dispersed accordingly throughout the, the, the 24 hours? 
in terms of the cops and stuff like that? Or am yeah. I strategically yeah, getting... Yeah. We, we do have three platoons, three equally manned platoons at all I times. I mean, so just so they don't know, the, the city doesn't sleep at the... You know. No, we have, we have three equal platoons, yeah. uh, equally staffed platoons right. that handle the city 24 hours. Because, you know, not necessarily more crime going on any specific I, time. That's why, that's why I know. brought it up. We, we, yeah. we do have reports that we, we had that study done, yeah. and they do show the times and the days oh. of the week that we do, ha our crime is up. Uh, what, what, what did the report show? It just showed specific times yeah. of, you know, like more incidents may happen this time of the, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, we did that several years ago. Um, but, but that's nothing to say. It's, we, we still have equally manned, same with our fire department. Our fire department is equally staffed throughout the 24 hours also. Best thing to know is that when when you're talking about the, the Hazelton and the, and the police department, the deterrence. Okay, knowing that you don't want to come here and do what you have to do. How's the um, uh, the city looking in terms of Wyoming Street and the different areas? Because you still have some people who are afraid to come into town. We talked about before. Now I got to say this: it's not like it used to be. Okay, as we begin to as they begin to see what the developments in town and the great things that are happening, and the protection that we have. It's not like it used to be. Well, you still have some people who've never been in town for the last two or three years. Well, you know, a lot of the areas that were uh, blighted and vacant <clears throat> are now up and running. You know, um, I don't know if there's any spaces on, Vi on um, Wyoming Street that are actually vacant now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, all the storefronts are, are being utilized. You know, they're all businesses running, you know, different hours of the day. Mm -hmm. Broad Street looks like it's pretty much filled up. So, like, like when you kind of put people there, That's it right. kind of yeah. Yeah. deters yeah. people from coming in. And you anyway. have the Arts Center, which is, is do, doing very well. Okay. Yeah. Um, friends, I'm talking to uh, Mayor Jeff Cassatt. It's the Mayor's Report. We do it every month. We do one in Pottsville and one in Hazleton. Uh, and we come back and we we'll talk about other things that are happening in the city. It's good to see good things happening. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Mayor's Report. I'm here at Hazleton. We're at the Hazleton Police Safety Center on uh, 780 North Church Street. Beautiful place. Um, a lot of cops around to keep the city safe. Uh, I want to tell you also, folks, this show is brought to you by the Hazleton Public Transit. Uh, and right at the end of the show, you'll see a nice um, video on every area that they cover. Uh, we run it every day just to remind you that they're there. So we're talking about um, some of the things in the, in, the, in, the, in the city, the fire truck. Tell me about this new uh, fire truck. You know, the same money that paid for this building uh, also paid for our twin engines, number two and number five. Um, we'll about oh, about $1.2 million. And this week we will be receiving the new tower truck, another $1.3 wow. million dollar, uh, piece of equipment, again paid through four without utilizing um, any wow. kind of tax money. That's, that'll be four fire engines that we replaced. Wow. Uh, you know, we put this, put this plan in place a long time ago and able to uh, yeah. get it uh, we, we, we talk about the police department not doing so well, and I, I don't want to t tell you we have a great fire department. I mean, you know, chief and all the fire, Everyone who's affiliated, they do a great job. They really do. Yeah, our, 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 our paid guys and our volunteers yeah, are amazing. They do a great job. Uh, boy, those trucks are not cheap, are they? No. Um, actually, the, the, the ladder truck we, we're getting in, is we, pay, we end up, it's, our final cost is going to be $1.33 million. Um, we ordered that over three years ago. Um, the cost on that machine now is probably $2.1 million. Um, you know, we, we ordered right at the beginning of COVID. We, you know, it, we saw the opportunity to make an investment and we bought all, we ordered all three pieces up front yeah. and we probably saved nearly a million dollars by, uh, wow. by doing what we did. Wow. Now, I understand you're going to be uh, up at uh, the park and you're going to be singing. Uh, yes, you, you, I, uh, I, I Jeff I, Cassatt singing, my friends, you got to come up and see him. This concert series, I think it's fantastic. Yes, you know. Uh, this is fantastic. City View Park, you know, we came into in 2016, you know, we went up there and we saw a basically a blank slate, yeah. and we just started putting things into it and adding more and more. And you know, we always had a vision of doing large community events up there. And you know, last year we we did 
did one concert on a Friday night. It went well. Um, we've been, obviously, we've been doing the fireworks up there for several years and uh, some, you know, the Rotary Wine Fest. And so, you know, the goal was always to do basically what they did for Rock in the River, you know, down here. So we will be introducing the uh, Rock in the Mountain concert series. They will be June 21st, June 28th, and July 5th. Um, and then after those three concerts, they'll go right into the Rock in the River. So there will be six weeks of, of music. Um, our, first content, our first concert will be um, the 21st, and it's going to be the, a local band. Six Shots will be opening for a Elton John tribute band. And then we have Leanne and Company, another local, uh, opening for um, a Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac cover band. And then Ostrich Hat will be opening for a Billy Joel uh, band. And then the next night will be the City Fireworks. So we have a lot of events going on up there um, in a short period of time. You're really into that stuff, aren't you? You really, you really push entertainment and push activities in the city, even when it comes to Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and the whole bit. You really get you into know, that, don't you? We, we always thought, and when I say me, it was, this is, you know, my, my team, we talk about this all the time, and we wanted to create events that the entire community could come together. You know, like when we came in here, there was a divide in the community. Who doesn't speak which language? You know, trying to get the people together. And we always felt that community events and sports are what bring people together. So we wanted to, you know, really uh, invest in our uh, parks and playgrounds so families had the time to do family things and just bring people together. And we're able to do that with the Easter Bunny Trail. You know, that's coming up too. We'll talk about that. And we had 800 kids come through there last year. Wow. You know, but... Uh, the Easter Bunny Trail, the Santa Claus, the parades, the tree lighting, the Halloween, like all these things are, you know, good community events. And especially the Santa Claus, you know, I mean, I've never actually ran into Santa Claus. I know he's in Hazleton a lot, but I've, I've always missed him. Um, but when you see when you see the people that come out of their homes, yeah, yeah. not just kids. The, I, I um, witnessed it. I yeah, witnessed it up at... Up at um, uh, MPB um, cemetery. I saw all the, the people coming out, and it was raining that day. Oh yeah, you know, and it was it was great. The Easter Bunny Trail. Easter Bunny Trail is at 1 p.m. up at City View Park. Mm -hmm. I believe we have 30 vendors this year that will be handing out uh, treats to the children. Um, we just come up there, you get to walk on our pa on our paved walkway, mm -hmm. and visit some of the local businesses and organizations, and mm -hmm. get get candy. Uh, yeah, tell them who some of the people are uh, that really help. We have the D'Angelo the, the family gave us, uh, they bought naming rights to the, the new all-inclusive playground. The All One Foundation, the Luzerne Foundation, you know, they're great. Yeah. Lehigh Valley Hospital. Yeah. Um, for the Rock in the River concert series, we have a lot of people that, that have already committed donations. Mm -hmm. um, the Luzerne Visitors Bureau, the NEPA, um, uh, Donald Karpovich, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Kislin, the eye doctor. They've all put made significant investments in this in this event but we have a lot of people that all year long yeah. give you know s donations to all of our events the comprehensive plan we t we're going to talk about that i uh, just give us a hint and then we'll you know i mean we, we spoke about that you know i think we teased about that last yeah. month but it's, it's a project that's going on for over a year um we got a grant uh, the city got a grant through the act 47 to do a comprehensive plan so the idea came about is trying to bring in Hazel Township and West Hazel and do one comprehensive plan for the entire area because then we could work together on grants. And if you have a plan and you reference that plan in a grant application, you're more likely to get that grant yeah. because it's obviously it's, it's in writing there that you need this, the community wants it. And that's, that's the whole plan with that. So we are in the final stages of that. And we're doing our final reviews on it. It's going to the planning. I think it went to the planning commission for introduction last week. So it'll go through the, uh, the planning commission. will have their input on it. The, the steering commission, they had their input on it already. You know, and the municipality leaders have put their input into it. So shortly we should have a comprehensive plan completed. You know, we did the Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Plan several years ago mm -hmm. where we took the entire area, not just the Hazleton City. Mm -hmm. We put that together. So we're really catching up on a lot of stuff that has been neglected for the last 
you know, several years. I mean, I think the last comprehensive plan was done in 1988. We're here at the Hazelton Public Safety Center. What, what we have a couple of shows coming up in the future. We talked about what are we going to be doing? I believe I think we want to try to get up at the, uh, the new public transit facility. We'll be opening next month. Uh, they'll be turning that over to the city, so I think I'd like to introduce us up to there. Um, we have a nice project going on up at the airport. Mm -hmm. So once that takes place, we'll do a show from up at the airport. Mm -hmm. You know, we are the only municipality of Pennsylvania that owns and operates its own public transit and airport facility. And, um, well, I, I'm always excited, and, and I'm, my friends, remember, sam at ssptv.com, any questions, any comments, let me know. I'll, I'll present them to the mayor and we could discuss them. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, bringing you additional information. Thank you uh, for the response we're getting. It's been positive. A couple suggestions we have, and we like to have suggestions. So, Mayor, I wish you the best. And now we're going to see the uh, video on the Hazelden Public Transit. Before we go to the video, anything you have to say in closing? I just, public, Hazelden Public Transit has so much more to offer than just, you know, the local bus rides, you know. Just watch the video and you'll see what, what offered, what's offered out there. Mm -hmm. All right, my friends, enjoy the video. Hazelton Public Transit, we're going places and making life easier. Our fleet of buses provide transportation throughout Greater Hazelton and the West Hazelton, Hazel Township, McAdoo, Tresco, Beaver Meadows, Weatherly, and Freeland areas. Just getting around town or going shopping at the Laurel Mall, Weiss Markets, Lowe's or Walmart, we'll drop you off right at the door. Need to get an appointment at the hospital or wellness center, we stop there as well. There are not many places throughout Greater Hazelton we can't get you to. In fact, we also have a bus route that can take you to or pick you up at Rittenhouse Place in Drums, along Route 309 in Mountaintop. Downtown Wilkesbury. the Wyoming Valley Mall, and even the Mohegan, Pennsylvania Casino. All of these bus routes are operated six days a week with limited bus service on Sundays. And for the convenience of our local workforce, our buses go to the Humboldt Industrial Park Monday through Friday with stops at most of the industrial plants. In fact, Amazon, American Eagle and AutoZone allow us to drop passengers off right at their front doors, while passengers for other plants are dropped off at the entrance to the industries. Our Humboldt route also takes and picks up passengers at the Lehigh Valley Hospital facility, formerly Coordinated Health in Humboldt Station. Bus fares for passengers are very affordable at $1.50 each way, whether you're going in town or all the way to Wilkesbury. And if you're a senior citizen 65 or older, you can sign up at our Church Street Station and receive a photo pass that you can use to always ride the bus for free. In fact, your senior citizen pass is valid for free public bus transportation anywhere in Pennsylvania. There are several options for purchasing tickets. At the Church Street Station in downtown Hazleton, you can purchase a refillable smart card that you can scan upon boarding the bus. Are you a frequent rider? HBT offers a 10-ride card for $13.50 or a 20-ride card for $27. You can also pay for your bus fares online. The HPT Smart Pay mobile app can help you pay securely and quickly without the need for exact change, all while offering the same flexible HPT fare options you're used to. HPT SmartPay is an integrated solution that makes it easy to ride. In addition to our 12 fixed route buses, which are all wheelchair accessible, we also operate three paratransit vans for passengers that cannot independently travel on our fixed buses. With the paratransit system, you receive round-trip service to your destination right from your front door 
Whether you're going to a doctor's appointment, shopping at the grocery or department store, or anywhere else. We'll even help you to and from your door if needed. Fares for this service are only three or four dollars each way, depending on the distance. Contact HPT for eligibility details. Penn State University students with a valid student identification can ride HPT buses free to all their favorite Hazleton destinations. If you want to shop, dine, work, or play, HPT is making life easier for you too. HPT also has an arrangement with the Hazleton Area School District so students can ride the bus at a reduced rate. Looking to the future, we are seeking ways to better our services and to protect the environment. Nine of our 12 fixed route buses run on compressed natural gas. Speaking of bettering our services, we are nearing completion of a new, nearly 50,000 square foot bus storage and maintenance facility near the Hazleton Regional Airport that will house our combined fleet of approximately 19 fixed route buses, paratransit vans, and service vehicles. The new bus storage and maintenance facility is the City of Hazleton's first new transit project since it broke ground for the Church Street Transportation Hub in August of 2008. That beautiful facility in downtown Hazleton opened in November of 2009. So, no matter where you need to go, Hazleton Public Transit buses are ready to get you there. For more information about the Hazleton Public Transit buses, fares, schedules, and routes, visit us on the web at ridehpt.com or call us at 570-459-5414.